that's what they think is the way to trade. Well, they're looking at the what and they probably looking at the how, but they ain't looking at the why. And that's because they don't know how to do this or they don't, they don't, they were not trained or not shown. So um, I go in great detail with this on a one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and in my lessons with the coaching students to really know how to do this. Okay, so yesterday, what, what, what kind of news we're looking for yesterday? Um, so in the New York sessions and stock, we're looking for kind of the theme or the sentiment to kind of build a sentiment uh, for what's happening in the market. Um, and you can say, you know, looking at, you know, what's going on from yesterday is the 23rd. There's a lot of things that's been going on and you can kind of get a sentiment of what's going on. Like for instance, just read the headlines. You don't have to read into the detail, but just read the headlines. Um, like he said, updates. The Fed, Evans says he didn't, he doesn't feel 2.5 inflation or even above. Okay, so Federal Reserve keeps interest rate at 2%. Okay, that's okay. Um, Congress and Fed both need to stay with it to bolster recovery. Okay, seems to be some concerns with the recovery. Um, I'm looking for like just kind of a big news around the um, analysis and things around the, the economy for U.S. to kind of get a feel for, oh, look at this one. U.S. stocks. This is yesterday now, the 23rd. Today is the 24th. This is U.S. stocks. Wall Street retreats as business activity slows. Index is off you know, 0.26 at this time. S&P 0.59. Um, Fed quality sees long recovery. Whoa. He's saying he's, the Feds are saying, the Federal Bank of the United States are saying that they see a long recovery. He says he'll be more patient on the inflation. Uh oh, that means they're going to be they're going to be very um, slow to be more aggressive on the dollar. Therefore, to keep an interest low, that means the dollar could be weak because there's not any favorability to put money into the dollar. If your interest is not going high, that means you're not going to put your money. You're not going to get your money. Uh, a good return on your money because the interest is so low. So therefore, there's not going to be a lot of people interested into the dollar. But keep in mind, that's one of the things that you'll learn with me during our coaching sessions. We'll go into great details on that for fundamental analysis. Um, Treasury yields, Fed reinforced policy stance. Look at this one. Stocks fall. Say what? This is what's going on. So stocks fall, dollars are up, at data warns of sputtering recovery. Ooh, that's that's kind of a that's kind of a concern there, right? So you start to catch the theme here. So let's go to more news here, starting from the bottom. U.S. business borrowed for equipment. Um, Canada, Mexico, U.S. Argentina forex dollar rallies as Fed COVID nineteen and recovery worries swirl. The dollar gains for the fourth day in a row has traded as more than eight weeks high Wednesday. U.S. equities fell, so investors questioned the pace of the global economic recovery, probably, is what they're talking about. Look at Fed roasts, and so they were doing some Fed, um, some Fed um, committee um, comments for the last couple of days, and he says, could face a credit crunch by year end if virus worsens. The U.S. economy could face more foreclosures. Whoa, business bankruptcies and falls. And in the winter, if there's a rise in infections and no additional fiscal aid conditions that can make it harder for the consumers and businesses to access credit, Boston Federal Reserve, President Eric Russell just said on Wednesday. Ooh. Look at, and right after that, look at U.S. stocks. Wall Street closes lower on fears of slowing the economy. Tesla's tumbles as a bad at data points. Uh-oh. So you can tell yesterday, and, and I did say, I could tell um, but the down market had the biggest downturn yesterday as we, as I was trading the New York sessions on the Dow. I took some nice trades over two, three, four hundred pips on the Dow yesterday just because of that news. You can tell. Look at right here, Fed's daily said inflation will be a guide on U.S. full employment. Um, U.S. stocks, Wall Street closes lower. Ooh, ooh, Wall Street closes lower on fields of slowing the economy. Look at S&P slide 1.9, um, 2.3, and Dow is 1.92, NASDAQ 303. 
uh, update Fed Rosinger says US could face a credit crunch by year end if price prices warrants worsen. Did I talk about that yet? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like the, the sentiment on the market is that the dollar and the Federal Reserve is um, having some concerns about the economy. So I'm getting the sentimental analysis on that. So that means on the New York sessions and the dollar could be weaker. Um, dollar signs as far as economy will so that could be a little bit of a mix up. So, we're, so that means that could be temporary, it could be short lived. Um, corporate group shares, investors cry out foul, US tightened shareholders, tightest rules. Um, Costa Rica, China, Forex dollar holds the banners as money flies. Kind of get a feel for the sentimental analysis about what's going on. Guys, this is what I do just before I get into the market, just in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so that'll be it for the news. Uh, this is stock alerts, lower dollar extends recent gains, market wraps, Asian stocks and European futures fell as warning for the Federal Reserve on the need of more stimulus injection. Fresh jitters into an already weak September for global equities. The dollar continues to recent run up on its on course for the strongest week since April. So that means the Dow is right here. It's looking on the down end for the market outlook, okay? So it says right here, S&P 500 closes fluctuated the US equities gauge um, drop on Wednesday to an eight week low with losses from its recent high, now almost 10%. Third Chairman Jerome Powell reiterated that there's a long way to go for the economic rebound, which likely require more support. The urgent needs for further fiscal stimulus was also stressed by other Fed officials. Treasuries were little change. Treasuries were little change, okay. The cost of comes in virus case stick higher to the U.S. and certain other nations. Some European countries have resorted to more social distancing, rattling investors. Traders are losing faith in the strength of the economy recovery, with the chance of congress congressional um, stimulus withering ahead of the contentious, uh, contentious U.S. election. So global equities are on course for the first monthly slide since March, with the MSCI gauge down more than 6% in September. Markets are digesting and grappling um, with the idea that the growth expectation that investors have might not materialize, said Lowe and Goodwin, economists and multi-asset portfolio st strategists at New York Life Investment. As the fiscal impulse in the U.S. starts to wane, some of these expectations for slow and steady recoveries are shaking. All right, so that tells us that the market is not feeling really good, right? Not feeling really good about things. All right, so let's see what we have in the market here. And let's see if we can see a, a trade setup opportunity. Look at that one, NCDJPY. All right, let's see what we have here. Ooh, look at the pound dollar just took off. Okay, so that's definitely breaking the Asian range there session right there. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna see some trades here. I'm gonna call out some trades. We're gonna do a quick London breakout. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I see, uh, Pound dollar taking the taking the jump. 
So let's go to pound dollar and I see Euro Swiss French, Euro pound taking a dump. All right, so let's do that real quick. I'm gonna to go to pound, dollar, pound, US dollar. So let's go here, go to pound, US dollar. Let's see what we got. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so that's the jump right there that we just saw right now. So this market is just getting up. So let's go ahead and put a nice little trade here. So this is going to be kind of a breakout. I'm just going to call out right now. Just I'm going to put a buy stop order, put a couple buy stops order here, right at the top of this, this candle here. I'm on a 15 minute time frame, So I'm taking a buy stance at the top of this little mid-level support on the easy triple dot trading system. Okay, so right now, as you can see on my on my strength meter here, I see JPY to be look at pound is pound is strong. So this is right here strong. US dollar is kind of weak, but it's definitely weak. It's not as weak, but it's definitely weaker than the British pound. So the pound dollar will be up. Okay, so I put a couple buy opportunities for pound. USD, I put a couple of uh, entries here. Let me put it into a chat so you guys can see that. So GBP, you guys can take the same trades or you guys can just sit back and watch me work. This is my live account, so this is something I'm doing. So I'm doing a buy, stop, opportunity, price is at, copy right into, one, right into the chat. Yeah, so I'm recording this, so I definitely have this recording. So this is going to help you, uh, I'll put it in there. Okay, so I got into the chat. Oh, sorry, not not the uh, pound JPY. I don't know why I'm thinking pound JPY, I'm thinking about pound USD. not pound JPY, um, pound USD. So I'm bullish, checking a buy right now on, I put a buy stop at 1.127. That's where my buy stop is at. Where do I put, place that? I place that right above that, that, that candlestick. So right at this candlestick, I put it right above that. So I let the trade come to me. If it, if it takes me in, I do a twin entry. And it looks like at the look look at this 15 minutes. You can see the 15 minutes already start to turn blue. You see that? So when you have the meter turn blue, turn blue, and you got this spike right here. I got the I got the arrow here. I got a green star. I got an arrow. I would expect a green arrow to come in. This is a London breakout. So this is coming right off of this key level of resistance here. Now the wider and the thicker the band, the stronger the support and resistance. So I'm taking this, it's gonna break, easy break this one, easy. Okay, so it's gonna take this one. It's already been coming down, coming down, and now it looks like it's hitting. GPP is strong, USD is weak, and we're going along. If I'm going too fast, you guys, so I apologize. This is a London breakout, this is how we're doing it. All right, so uh, pound, Euro pound. So Euro pound, oop, it's taking a dump. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to Euro pound. Right here, your pound is taking it down. I'm doing a couple of market entries here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go sell, sell. So I'm already in it right now. So, so Euro, GBP, market execution, for a sell. my prices on that one. So if this one turns out to be a loser, I'll come in and put the stop loss and the take profit right after um, after I get this going a little bit.
Okay, your GBP, I'm showing, showing right now, I just posted in the chat, your GBP, so market execution, or you can put a sell binding, uh, you can set, put a sell pending order, okay? So if you can put a sell pending order, you can do that as well. Sell stop pending order at 0.91571. That's where my price is at. So I just posted that in the chat. Okay, so that's your GBP. What else we're seeing in the market? Pound yen. Pound yen is looking to make a move here. Let me see here. to the one hour pound in was coming down right off of resistance here off them it, 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 look it came off my support went up get my resistance came down if my support came up it's been in this little range here and came off of this resistance came down this is on a one hour time frame for pound yen and it came out so it's looking like it's trying to give it a little bit of a nudge up. I'm not convinced that it wants to go up. So we are going to wait on that a little bit to see what the market does. So that little breakout could be a little fake out, All right? So that is on a pound yang. So look, let's look a little bit closer at pound yang. I got pound yen that I was looking at. Yep. GBP yen. So let me pull up that market, that chart. GBP yen. Okay. Here we are, 15 minutes pound yen. Okay, so it's on the downturn here. You can see it where the market is coming down. Oh, this is a nice trade setup right here. This is a perfect anatomy of a setup right here. There's two trade setups on pound yang. This is a good trade setup on the easy triple dot trading system when you see a star. This is a significant correction dot. Set, go right here. All the meters are blue and this is perfect. This is around um, I want to say yesterday, London session, this was a perfect trade setup. So around four o'clock yesterday, this was a good trade setup. And then this one right up, it went up 143 pips yesterday. Okay, that's 143 pips yesterday. I took this trade yesterday and did great. So this one I caught yesterday. I caught this um, during London session yesterday. Obviously, we don't do London session with the team, but I caught this yesterday. This was a great trade setup. Now, I did not catch this one coming back down. I wish I would have caught this one. This is another anatomy of a good trade setup. You got the reversal arrow down at a key resistance level, right? You got this, ready, set, go, and look at the meters here. You got red, red, and you got the crossover, green crossover, turn red. This is the perfect trade opportunity. You want to take this, you want to write this down to it right here to just dot if you wanted to, just as on a pullback. This is 76 pips, okay? The pullback on this pound yen. With, so this pound yen, if you would have got out the dot, right? This is a pullback or you can write it out, but this is a pullback of 43 pips. So if you wanted to trade this, you could, Obviously, I don't recommend trading against the trend, but if you are an avid risky scalper, just put them in a nice little 43 scalper for you. Right here, you can play from dot to dot. And the way you trade it on the easy trouble dot trading system, well, you don't wait for the reversal error on a, on a pullback, right? So reversal error just kind of delay on the pullback. This is just a confirmation. By the time you got this error painted, it's already showing you another dot coming back down. 
you got a green dot, it's going to give you a red dot, okay? That's how pullbacks work. Look at green dot, red dot. Green dot, yellow, small mini pullback correction. Red dot, yellow. Green dot, red dot. Boom, come all the way down to um, support. And then it comes all the way up to resistance. You got a green dot pullback, red dot pullback. Now, here you would have just had to play off the meter and just say, okay, boom, meter, 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 and then look at the candlesticks. Those are your confirmation. Look at the candlestick. The candlestick are solid blue, wicks, and body. And it's on the other side of the price action channel. Boom, take that trade right there, and you can get out. I don't know if you can get out right there. You probably would have to get out right at the close of that candle. So that would have been a nice nine pips, to be honest with you, um, from an entry standpoint and an exit. It would only been nine pips. Is that worth it? No, not really. Where did I get the 40 pips? Well, I got the 40 pips at the top, at the bottom of this candle. If you would have got it at the top of that candle, you'll never get in and get top and get out at the very, very top. Okay. Don't, don't even try it. It's not even worth it. Okay. So where we're at and what we're talking about and why we're we even looking at Japanese yang. Well, we see some activities, right? So the Japanese yang is strong here. GBP is strong, but we see that it was strong for a pound against the yang, and all of a sudden the the GBP just took a dump back, and it looked like it's moving sideways. So we're going to wait on this. This is could be just a just a blip, kind of a fake out, and it could be coming back down, right? So let me take a look at my GBP pair here, trade setup. So same thing here. Go ahead and put my stop loss. And go ahead and get ready for a possible loss if it if it doesn't come down. Let me go ahead and put my stop loss here for pound. I'm gonna give you guys that setup now since we're already here. So I went into a market execution. That doesn't mean you have to, okay? <laughs> I jumped, I probably jumped the gun. I could have just put a market execution here. Here I am starting, thinking that it was getting ready to jump in. So I probably pulled the gun a little bit too early. I think it might eventually go down depending on the Euro news, especially if the Euro news is weak, but the pound is still, in, is, is, is strong. It is stronger than Euro. So. It may pull back and it may come back down. So I'm going to put my stop loss right at this, where this level is at, the previous high. That's where I'm going to put my stop loss at. I'm going to give you guys a stop loss target for euro pound trade with the market execution. GBP, Euro, GBP, stop loss. So that's where I put the stop loss sets for the Euro GBP. You guys got the um, pendant sales stop order there. And we're looking at a possible 23 pip stop loss, which is really, really tight. Okay. But we're scalping here. We're not playing long term swing trading. Um, here we're scalping day trading. Um, so this is a tight 23 pip stop loss. Could this get blown? Of course it could, easy, and then come back down. So if you want to play this even safer and be a conservative, you can go off of the. Um, the average daily range, which is around, um, it was 81 pips for an average daily range for yesterday. Right now it's about 24 pips. So that's why I, this is the agent range right here. So this is the agent range from this time. 
to this that little range that it was in during the Asian session while we were, you know, away for the last eight hours. So it's just the range. This is coming off the New York session right here, right? This is a nice trade setup. This is just coming off the London session here. This is a nice setup. This one right here, reversal with the, with the arrow confirmation. You got a red arrow. You got everything red. This is a nice trade setup on the 15 minute for Euro GBP coming down. And then at the end of the New York session, it, um, well, at, at kind of in the mid of New York session, you can see where it's starting to come up and you got a confirmation arrow, you got a blue, green arrow, and then you got blue meter. And then it kind of went into an Asian range for a little bit, but it stayed, it stayed in the uptrend momentum channel, right? You got the red pullback, you got the green arrow, green dot pullback, you got the red dot pullback, you got the green dot pullback, and now it's hitting at a mid level. So it possibly could come back. We'll see, depending on the news, what um, pound and euro and pound. So if pound maintains strength, this could come up. Um, but I'm banking on the pound to the euro to, um, so the pound remains more stronger than euro, then this will go down because the euro is the base currency, pound is the quote currency. If the pound, if the base currency is weaker than the quote currency, then we're going to see a downtrend. Not to mention, you can see you just automatic channel, right? On a 15 minute time frame, the screen, the screen indicator. You can see where it came up on this side of the channel, came all the way down to this side of the channel, came all the way up on this side of the channel. What do you think could possibly happen? Yep, could possibly come on this side of the channel as well. Right, so that is a definite possibility. If the market continues to go down, if the market continues, and I say that, that doesn't mean just because it hit the side of the channel, it's gonna come up on the other side of the channel. That's not how the channel trading works. If the pair is trading and it's coming down and it's saying, okay, so this is target, it came down because of whatever news and then it came up and it hit, hit the side of the channel. If news continue to be weaker for, for the euro against the pound, then it will come down. Where's the target? The target could be at this level here. This is a small, small level. This is a weak level, I mean, because the size of it is short and this can come all the way down to this side of the channel. And this side of the channel is where you get a strong support level. Well, guess what? This happened to be in a little bit of a channel here. So the target could potentially come all the way from here to here. Hey, you guys wanna learn how to trade this? I'm giving you guys the answer right now how to trade this with the easy trip that trading system, okay? I'm looking at a 43 pip, 48 pip potential um, on this particular trade, this obviously would be TP1 here, around 16 pips, but this easy could be blown and come all the way down if it continues. So when price gets around this level, this untested support level, this is where I would be looking to see some reaction with the price. And if it breaks, which I'm expecting it to break, it will come all the way down and it would give me around this TP2, okay? So that's Euro GBP. If you just came in late in the chat, um, see if you can see a um, order here. I just put it into the chat again. So that's your GBP. So I got the pendant order for um, your GBP for um, the sell stop for your GBP. Also pound. USD, so look at, I put, like I didn't build a market execution on this one, see? So I did do a pending buy stop for um, pound US dollar. You don't want to, you don't want to get in and start chasing trades, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the chat. So if you just came into the chat, you'll see pound USD buy stop price. And that's where I put that at. All right, let's see what's going on in the other market. Pound USD, US 30 is moving. Okay, that's good. Uh, US switch France is moving. Remember, we got the news coming up for US switch France, so we're going to take a look at that. 
we got UOUSD. Um, your USD is looking to hold. We'll come back to that real quick, but I'm seeing some little activities on US Swiss France. Let's take a look on US Swiss France. Okay, so this is US Swiss France on the upper right hand corner of my chart. I'm gonna go to the one hour and see what the movement look like. So if you can see real quick, you can see where the, it's an uptrend, a downtrend, and then you can see where it's in a little bit of a channel. Let me know if you guys can see that. This is on a one hour time frame, right? So when you're trading, you want to take a look. You don't want to go, you don't have to go to that daily and weekly because we're not looking for a weekly outlook. We're looking for a short term day intra trade, intraday trading opportunity, right? So as you can see, this is definitely a channel. We're going to go to the one minute. And when we go to I mean, the 15 minutes, when we go to the 15 minutes on your switch French, we should be seeing a channel trade opportunity. So this might be a valid trade opportunity set up for um, your switch friends. And this is looking to be a good trade setup on your switch friends. So let's go here. We're going to go to your switch friends. Now I know I've got news coming up for your switch friends. So it's 3.30 right now. So we should start to see some news coming out on your switch friends. So I'm gonna put the easy triple dot trading system while that's loading. I'm gonna go to Euro Switch France. I'm gonna go to my Porsche factory. I'm gonna refresh it. I'm gonna see some news for Euro Switch France. What we see, what we see, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So the bank policy, nothing changed. Everything's come the same. So we're probably starting to see some strength on Euro Switch France. What we're starting to see right there. So what I am going to do is do a market execution for a Buy, buy for US Switch friends. So I went into a market execution buy for US Switch friends. Now you can do a pending buy if you want to, but I just went into a buy for US Switch friends. Market execution buy. That means I just went straight into the market. I'll give you guys the price right now where I went into. Where am I? Where am I? One point zero seven eight hundred. Okay, so that was more market execution for US Switch France. Good. Okay. I'm glad you can hear me. If you can't see me, um, are you saying that you can't see my church at all? Everyone else is the same? Can anyone else see my chart? Or you guys can see my chart. Can you guys see my chart? I want to make sure you guys can see my chart. Yep, I'm only on one, so I got my Easy Triple Dot Trading System. Can you guys see Easy Triple Dot Trading System? You guys can see my Euro Switch friends. Yes. Yep, I can see your charts. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, Lawrence, I'm not sure what's going on, man. Not sure what's going on. I'm glad you can hear me. So maybe you can just follow my word, man. Follow blindly, man. <laughs> but um, it, but my everyone is seeing my charts, so I'm not sure what's going on in your end. You may want to just kind of log off real quick and then jump back in. See if that helps. Yep. See if that see if that helps. See if it comes in. Log in. Log out. I'll let, I'll let you back in right away. Okay, guys. So you were switch friends. I'm up. So this is moving pretty good. Um, my only concern is here. Right, you guys can see that what's going on. So you guys can see this was a nice trade setup coming here, coming down. 
So that was a nice 29 pip move. This was a, now remember what I said, I'm gonna move to the one hour time frame here. Get some chart space here. I like to, I like to make some room for my charts. I got a little pet peeves around chart space. You want as much chart space as possible. So let me go ahead and make this move over here. There you go. Okay, so you remember what I was saying about the channel, right? So on the one hour time frame, it came down. It didn't come all the way to the other side of the channel. Just keep in mind, just because you're in a channel trade doesn't mean it comes all the way down to the channel. It, it come close, but that's not the definition of a channel trade just because it doesn't hit the other side of the channel. I got a lot of lines here. Let me let me clear some of these lines because these are all the pivot level lines. I don't think I need all of these mid-level pivots. So I got mid-level pivots. So you can go to the pivot indicator here. This is one of the bonus indicators. Um, and you got mid-levels, so just false. And what this will do, this will clean up all of the mid-level, MS1, MS2, MS3, okay? If you guys just missed that, don't worry, I got it recording and see how it clears up most of the lines. So then I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a template. Hey Lawrence, you can see my chart now. Okay. So you can see where price came down. It came all the way down here at this support level, came up to the side of the channel. It tried to make its way on this side of the channel, but it came up. So the, the definition of a channel is when price goes up and it both passed past the previous low and it gives you a lower low and then it comes up and it passes the previous high. It gives you a higher high, but it comes back lower than the previous, um, than the previous, um, I would say, not that, came past the previous high. Okay, Lawrence, cool. Came back down past the previous high, then it comes up it gives you a little bit higher high and it comes back and it comes back way past the previous higher high. That's when you know you're in a channel, right? So it right, hit this, it, this, these two hit channel right on the money. Okay, so again, channel, higher highs, higher lows, higher high is just slightly higher than the higher high, but the higher low blow past the previous higher high. That's the definition of a channel market structure. Okay, going up, come back down, and I'm just taking this trade going up. My concern is in the level right here, right? So if you look at the lower time frame going to the 15 minutes, this is pretty big, isn't it? You can see this is pretty big, but if you zoom out, I say, well, it's not that big. You know, it's bigger on the 15 minutes in this perspective, but this is stronger the one up top. So what that means that this would be considered like a TP1 and this would be considered a TP2, right? So we, we're getting in late in the game here. I'm too, I'm too pissed late into the game, right? This the trade should have been started right here on this confirmation arrow. So I should have been 19 pips into the move. But then again, this is, come on now, give me a break here, to, right? This arrow was like right at two, about 220, two, 240, right? So then it just took a break and it just broke out. Just broke out of London, right? We had the news shot up. So I do expect Euro um, to be um, strong against Swiss France, right? So whatever news caused Swiss France to be weak and Euro to be strong, therefore I expect Euro to kind of just suit up here in this regard. All right, so that's why we're seeing this breakout. So this is the 15 minutes that go to the one hour. You can see the levels, okay? So this is that, that mid-level is currently that looked kind of big on the 15 minute. Well, it's not that significantly big, right? If you look on the higher time frame, this is right here, it's bigger. So this is more of a realistic target on a higher time frame on a horizon. If you're looking at um, scalping, then stick to the small levels on the 15 minutes. Well, I mean, stick to kind of a, these levels here on the 15 minutes for scalping. So in other words, if you were scalping this, I would just take the little trades here, here, and here. 
So you got this trade going up, right? And then you got the trade going down. Okay. So at when I when I trade the London breakout, remember, I don't put stop losses, I don't take take profits right away. I, I get into the market and then I go ahead and put stop losses and take profits, come back to it. If you want to go ahead and put a take profit and stop losses, go for it. If you're waiting on me, then you need more coaching. Okay. So don't wait on me to put your stop losses and then take profits. As a pro trader, I always come back. If you need something like right now, go ahead and put them in and I will put them in for you um, as soon as I get caught up on here and looking at some of the market, right? So I don't expect that market to bounce back on me right away to be concerned. It goes, oh my God, I'm gonna be losing this trade. I will come back to it and put a stop loss on it. But right now I'm trying to get a jump on the market. Scan the market real quick. And then I'll come back and get those stop losses and take profits. Um, let me take a look on Euro GBP, Euro USD. All right, Euro USD, let me go to the one hour. What do you guys see here? This is the one hour time frame. What do you guys see? Just, just a higher, this is kind of a higher high, higher low. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. What is kind of more higher lows, higher highs, downturn, right? So, so we're seeing this going up now on the 15 minutes. Should we take a jump on that? No, you do not want to take a jump on that. You want to kind of wait to see what it does, right? This might be put us in a better position for a buy. So let's jump into the 15 minutes. So you look into the 15 minutes and what do you see? So you see this little jump come up on your USD and you're thinking, oh my God, so guess what everybody else do? It's an uptrend, it's an uptrend, go, 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 buy, buy, buy. And they're buying, right? So they buy into this and they try to get this little 19 pip move, right? Are they gonna get the very bottom? They're gonna get the very top? Of course not, right? No one's buying at the very bottom and at the very top. So they may catch this in mid range and probably get, you know, um, 11 pips at best because they're going to be trying to wait for confirmation to when they get out. So we are going to try to catch this on a rebound here. Let me go ahead and pull my fib tool here. This is at a nice 0.78 level. Perfect. This is a really good steal right here, price opportunity here. So we are going to set up a, you better believe it. We're gonna look for a, um, we're gonna see if this price comes up to see here. If it comes up this pivot level, then we'll be looking to take a buy. But if it comes down, and then we'll be looking to take a sell. So we'll keep an eye on this before I put my, my pin in order here to see what the direction is going. Cause right now it's seeming to be on a pullback. So let's go to easy trip of that trading system real quick to see what that looks like. Your USD. And I'll come back to your switch France. Come on, zoom in. Your switch France. Euro USD. Okay, so you can see this is the 15 minute time frame, and you can see where it's been coming in. From the left hand side of the chart. Okay, so where's my reversal L? I see this one. Where's the other one at? Right? You want to see where that's at, right? Where the price come from. Whoa. Was this it over here? Way over here in the corner. You guys can see that? Wow. That's the 15 minute. Or oh, isn't that a perfect trade setup? Look at right in key resistance area. Meters blue. Yellow arrow. Set. Wow, wouldn't you love to cap that one? Look at this is all red. This is a perfect trade setup. This is a perfect trade setup, guys. Okay? Price comes on the other side of the price action channel. Both of the candlesticks red. Look at the 50. Look at the 200. Nice. This is sweet. This is like cutting butter, right? This is cutting butter. It's just 
cuts easy. That's 126 pip move, guys. And then you got this, um, you got this dot that tells you just to pull back. Could you have ridden it out? Sure. Could you get out? Sure. You can get out, and then what you could do, you can play that strategy and then get back in on this one, right? You can try to see it and wait until price comes off at this um, resistance. You got this arrow, and then play back to the next um, pull back to level, or you can just stay in the trade. There's two ways to trade it, trade this, right? You can from that reversal arrow dot up here, and you can keep on going, and just it just kept going down in this trend. Now this is a 15 minute time frame. Now if you would trade on a one hour, right? You, you're using a one hour for overall directional bias. Well, that overall directional bias, it's telling you that, look at, you see, the, you see what color you see here? What color you see here? It's all red, it's all red. So if you go to the 15 minute time frame, right? You're gonna see, you're gonna see some red, right? You're gonna see some red, that's not even it. It's, where is it at? Looking for my reversal hour on the 15 minute time frame. Okay, there we are. Right here, that's right here. This time we see some red, we see some blue, pull back. We see some red, blue, red, blue. We see some blue, we see some red, we see some blue, we see some red, we see some blue, we see some red. You see how that much noise is on the 15 minute time frame? So you would be trying to scalp that going up and down, up and down, up and down. You could if you want to, right? Or you can trade and use the 15 minutes for entries and exit, but use the one hour, the higher time frame for overall directional bias. In other words, on this particular trade with the dot at the resistance level, you see here, let me look at the time all the way down, 921 at 10, go down to the 15 minutes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna find that time frame, 921. Right here, 921 at 10. Boom, right there, guys. This is spot right here. This same spot right here is this spot on the one hour. Type in yes in the chat if you can see that. This is the one hour spot of that same location under 15 minutes. Help me make sure this makes sense to you guys. This is key, key level. You guys wanna master this? You guys wanna be experts in traders? You guys wanna be great on entries and exits? You guys wanna see how you use with multiple time frame? This is how you use it. If you use it any other way, you will fail and be doomed to not be a consistent profitable trader using this easy triple dot trading system. And guess what? You know what I'll hear from you guys? Oh, this sucks. Oh, this easy triple dot trading system is not really what a crack up to be. Oh, this system sucks. I need to jump onto another system. So you're gonna jump from system to system. You guys are gonna be system hopping because you guys didn't take the time to listen, watch this recording, going through the lesson, watching the indicators chart, stop, um, chart setup and going through the instructional manuals and really take the time to study, learn, practice, and repeat. Study, learn, practice, and repeat. Guys, I didn't get to this level overnight. This is my fifth year trading, okay? I'm, I'm telling you guys by experience, if you guys wanna master this, I'm teaching you guys something that I don't want you guys to keep coming to me and learning how to trade five years from now. I want you guys to be independent traders. I'm teaching you guys, I'm teaching you guys how to fish here. This right here. I would have I would have gotten into this trade and guess what? Stay in the one hour time frame. Keep looking at the one hour time frame. Just say, hey, do I need to get out? Do I need to get out? No, you stay in. Stay in. Okay. So this would if you would have if you would have got in here. Let me let me be realistic. You would have got in at the end the close of this candle right here, and you would have got all the way in. You would have been looking at a hundred and forty five pip move, just like that, in one day, right? Uh, maybe a couple of days, 71 candles. So that's that's how you make that move. So this is your USD and I caught this and I've been, I, I me myself kind of got out and got in a couple of times, but I've caught this on overall downtrend. So we know on the overall directional bias, this is a sell opportunity, right? So if you go to the 15 minutes 
And then we're saying, okay, what does it look like on the 15 minutes? Well, it looked like a buy. So do we take that buy? No, we don't take that buy. This is a, it's selling as a great thought. It might be a pullback. So for us to take a buy, we will have to go to the one hour and see if the buy is confirmed, right? I wanna see blue. I wanna see this right here break some key level here. It would have to at least break this level for me to even consider taking as a buy, going above this channel. It had to be a breakout of this channel, had to be above this 50. So if I was getting into this trade and said, okay, do you take, what kind of trade setup would you take it here? I would be looking for a sell opportunity, to be honest with you. I'm looking for a sell. The one hour telling me it's all red, even though I got a reversal arrow, even though I got a green yellow arrow, this doesn't mean anything until I see a green reversal arrow and the meter turns blue for me and this thing goes up at a key level for me to take right above this channel, above this 50, okay? That's how you look at it. So as of right now, I'm waiting. So I have to come back to it. So as of right now, I'm not calling this a, um, a buy trade setup. So I would have to wait until it sees a break of structure, maybe at this resistance level in the 15 minutes, even though the 15 minutes call in the time frame, it's um, 50, I would have to wait. So I'm looking for this to possibly come back down. If it comes back down, then I would be looking for a possible sell opportunity. And I'm looking for sell. I'm looking for sell. The overall direction of bias is, is down and I'm looking for a sell. So this is how I'm looking for the trade just to kind of give you guys a setup. So when you come here and you see, okay, the, it's the, the, the lower time frame is not consistent with the higher time frame. what am I doing? I'm looking for an opportunity to come back down. But if, it, but if, it, uh, if the, sellers start to confirm that they take an over on a one hour time frame, then I'll I'll at least look at 30 minutes as well. So I'll even look at the 30 minutes to kind of give me kind of a perspective. The 30 minutes is another good time frame between the one hour. So I'll take a quick look at the 30 minutes to see this gives me a blue. If this gives me a blue, this would turn blue before the one hour will. Okay, so the 30 minutes, it's a good mid-level, kind of an early detection, so you don't have to wait all the way to the one hour. Get the 15 minute, it's only two candlesticks that makes up a 30 minute candlesticks. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're on pause for you or USD. I'm gonna look for a news opportunity for Euro at four o'clock in about five more minutes. We're about to see what's gonna happen with that Euro USD. So let's go back to the Euro Chef French. I'm gonna go ahead and put some buy stop order here. Um, I'm gonna put 15 minute time frame. So this is gonna hopefully hold up for a little bit. Um, I don't wanna move my stop loss to break even yet because it's not in profit. But it's at a key level, right? On the 15 minute time frame. This is looked to be a key level. Let's look, look, let's look at the one hour. The one hour is saying that this is a dot, a red dot. So this could be a pullback, right? So on the higher time frame, it's a dot. But if you look at the lower time frame, it's actually a solid dot. Okay. It's solid dot. So I'll be looking to come back down. Let me look at some shots here. So that being said, the gold, for example, if you would wait, um, you would want the 30 minute to be at least be blue um, and take out some key support. Um, yes, that would be a great example for gold. Um, however, um, as I said in my trading video for gold indices, you want to play at a smaller line, smaller time frame. Um, I'm not sure if you guys, if you watched that video, you probably didn't. It's an hour and 45 minutes. You may want to watch that. So I talk about gold and I talk about indices on that. So when we trade gold and indices, I don't trade day trade in terms of one to two days for gold. I actually go down to a lower time frame. So if you just take a jump down, I would say trade the five minutes and two to 30 minutes or trade the one minute and two to five or 15 minutes. So if you get use your one minute for entries and exit, then you use your five and 15 minutes for overall directional bias. It's the same perspective. You just, you're just scaling down another time frame down. I hope that makes sense. 
So you use that same concept though, the 30 in one minute. And in the instructional manual, there's a chart, there's a graph in the instructional manual that gives you the recommended time frame. okay? GPP USD just hit the buy stop order. All right, cool. Um, Ryan suggested Euro GBSP. You guys see that in the chat, Ryan, for stop loss? So let me know if you see that, Ryan, in the, in the uh, chat. Oh, it meant TP. Yeah, I didn't put a TP in yet. I'll give you a suggested TP in a minute. Hold on real quick, let me take care of this. What we're looking at, average daily range yesterday with 32 pips. So just to get to let you guys know, on the upper left-hand corner right here, it's very, very small, very small. It gives you the average daily range, the ADR. So that is a good way to manage your risk management, such as stop losses is another indicator to kind of help you indicate what type of range the ch chart would move on a lower time frame to kind of give you a good barometer of where to put your stop losses at, okay, and take profit. So if I were to take this down, 32 pips, whoa, I wouldn't go that low, right? So this is a range that it could move, right? So let me see what I can do here. Let me go ahead and what if I move my stop loss way down here real quick? What does that look like? I can do that. I can afford that. Looking through a one hour. This is on a channel. It could come back down. It could come back up like that. Or it can just continue on. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be holding this for a little bit. So let me go ahead and give you my stop loss here for Euro Swiss France. Now, of course, you know how to manage your trades. You guys know how to manage your trades? You guys know what to do with manage your trades when I went over it in the um the um and the lessons there. You guys are probably going, huh? Huh? Moving your moving your um your stop loss to to break even. Okay, I'm gonna put the stop loss into chat right here. So for Euro Swiss France. Loss is at 1.07567. Okay, 1.0567. It's in the chat. So this is a 23 pip, um, 23 pip stop loss. Okay, that's in the chat. That's for the stop loss. Now for TP, um, I'm looking at TP here. This is be my TP zone here. On a, I went to the one hour time frame to give me an overall horizon. And I'm eyeing this as my TP area. So this right here would be in a 16 pip. This would be a TP1. So I will go ahead and put that as a TP1. Which is very small. And that's why I say that's a TP1. Now I can move my take profit all day long. But if you want to kind of do it, set it and forget it, 
this would be your TP1. So I just put TP1 for your chef. That's in the chat. I'll put that for one of my trades, and then this would be TP2. Let me put that into the chat as well. So this is, you see this R2, you see this R3, you see this right R3 is like right in the freaking middle of this resistance. This is on a one hour time frame. If you don't see that, take a look at your chart and you guys can do that. What I just did, if you're watching the recording, you may wanna go ahead and try to set your mid-level and pay attention to some of these resistance and S1s and S2s, S3 on the plus template. This is on the plus template. You're not gonna get this on the simple template. This right here are very, very key. So you can use this for targets as well, right? So TP1 would be 1.08, uh, I'm gonna tell you, we do a more of a psychological level. 1.08150 Hey, what do you guys think about an idea? I got an idea. What do you guys think about, how about I don't coach you guys and I just do a daily live trade room, daily live trade room for two hours. And I don't teach you a damn thing. You just come in and I just feed you. You come in, I give you the take profit. I give you the stop losses. I give you the trades and you just follow exactly what I do. But I ain't teaching you crap. Don't say anything to you. I'm not showing you what I'm doing. I just do it. Would you guys be interested in paying for something like that? Do you think people be interested in coming to be fed or to be coming to learn? What are you guys' input on that? Brad said, I'm a learner. Smart guy, smart guy. It's to have two types of trade rooms, one for those who like to fish and those who like to be taught how to fish. Both depends on the person, but wanted to learn myself. Yeah, but you're not going to learn if I'm just, you just sitting here taking all the take profits and entries and I don't teach you it. I just tell you this is the take profit and this is the entry. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm not going to tell you it's in the channel or uptrend or downtrend. Just give it to you. <laughs> Matt said, I'm alone. So here we are, we are learning, but we're all going to own as well. So this is the earn to you learn, earn while you learn. All right, guys, so we're five pips into the move. So here's what I would teach you guys. All right, so what you wanna do is wait till this move breaks out of this channel here. We're gonna watch it come out of this channel. We'll come back and check it in a few minutes. So when it comes out of this channel, and this is where I'm, I'm coaching you guys, if it comes out of this channel and it lists, get at least 15 pips, let's say 15 pips, then go ahead and move your um, move your break even, your stop losses to slightly above break even. You want to move it to about five, maybe two or three pips above break even. Why 15 pips? Here's the reason why. I'm coaching you guys. This is a this is an opportunity to learn. And earn while you learn, because if it was just a trade room and I wouldn't teach you crap, I wouldn't tell you. So here's the reason why I'm giving you guys some master tips. It's because the average trading range is around 30 pips. That makes sense? The average trading range is around 30 pips. How do I find that out? On the EG Triple Dot Trading System, they give you the previous day's average daily range, 32 pips. Current day range right now, 29 pips. So on the average, it's about 30 pips. So that means that this thing could go up 30 pips, can come down 30 pips in the range, okay? What you want to do is give it at least half of that. If anything, come close to your TP1, move your stop losses to break even so that if it does come back, at least you didn't let your winners become a loser. You didn't gain much out of here. Then you would go ahead and take that, um, that, that stop loss, right? And then if it comes back up, you look for an entry. Now, that's option number one. Option number two is 
as soon as it hit TP1, close one of your trades and don't move your stop loss at all, which is probably not the smartest thing to do. I would say move your stop loss to break even, let it go to TP1, let it close at TP1, close half your position if you're doing a twin entry. If not, just let it go and use your TP1 as a psychological target, meaning if it hits TP1, great, just watch it. And then as it moves past TP1, then move your stop loss to TP1. Okay, that's how you do it. You move your stop loss to the TP1 as your TP1 is starting to move to TP2. Now prices come back, but guess what? You're already back TP1, right? That makes sense? Hope. Let me know if that makes sense. This is how, that's trade management. I'm just giving you guys some coaching. You got trade management right now. Um, you guys want to learn? Does that help? That makes sense? Let me go to my dashboard now real quick. Brad said, I like it. I like it. Awesome. Well, we're going to get into New York session, baby. We're going to trade this one. I'm going to make some money, some of my money back. Why? Right. said, so you didn't know that? Oh my God, that's trade management, man. Well, I know. I'm, I'm telling you, not a lot of people are sharing that secret. Okay, so what we're looking at here, we're, we're coming back to, remember, uh, Euro, Euro USD? Euro, oh, see, USD is going to give us a setup, guys. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I was looking for. I was waiting for that. Told you, Euro USD. Let's, let's, let's see what it does. Let's go to the 15 minutes. What do we see? What do we see? It's coming up and it's giving us that. You see how it went up and it's pulling back now. And it's pulling back to exactly how we want it. So we'll go to the one hour and look what it's doing. It's coming up, coming up, coming up. And it didn't even make all the way past this side of the channel, right? So it, it, it reached halfway. So this little dotted line in the middle is also a target, right? So if we're gonna pass this target to this side of the channel, to this side of the channel, it went eh, just about this side and came back. So it, this is not a it's not a it's not a channel tr trend. This is actually a downtrend. Higher lows, right here. Lower lows, higher lows. Um, let me start. Lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low. This is actually a downtrend. This is not a channel, but you can use a channel to kind of give you a nice trend direction, right? This is another way to do it. You got to see the two moving averages. You see this red moving averages? It doesn't change the freaking color, does it? Why? Because this whole meter is red. And this 200 moving average is way below the 200 moving average. I hope that makes sense. This is a clear trend. Very, very clear and a very simplistic level, right? We go to the um yeah that's that, i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> so this is definitely getting ready to make us a nice trade so let's let's put this trade so how do we do this Leonard? how do we put this in the trade man i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just here to get fed man all right hold on hold on okay so we go to We're gonna go ahead and catch it right at this level right here. Yep, okay. Okay, guys, so here we go. Here we go, here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. Put the trade in right here. I got this. Right click, sell stop. Put my sell stop order right at the top of this level here. And this is Price 1.468. So I'm going to put that in the chat, guys, here. Euro USD. We're going to go short. Euro USD. We're taking a sell stop at one point one four six eight. Now, what I did was I put it at the top of this order. And then I'm gonna put another one right below it. Right at this arrow right here. So it's gonna break this structure on a lower time frame. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the one minute, one hour time frame. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So it's going to break this level and it's gonna come back down. This is a strong level, this S1 here. 
like price could, I'm telling you, price could, it could come down to here and it could bounce back up. So we have to be aware of that price could come down to this area and bounce back up. But this would be kind of like a, I, want, I don't even want to call this a TP1. This is my TP1 here, All right? So let me go ahead and since I got this order in, I'm gonna go ahead and put a stop loss in here. Average daily range at 67 pips. Uh, I'm not gonna put a 67 pip stop loss in here. I don't wanna put 67 pip stop loss, that's way up here. I will put it to this area right here and I'll give it, you know, I'll give it a nice 35. Um, I'm going to give it a 37 pip move. I do that right here where the untested level, untested sellers were at. I'll put the, I'll put it there. I do that. So that's 1.168 two eight. So if I go to a smaller time frame, what I'm talking about is putting my level right here. Just go to the lower time frame to kind of get a target for your stop loss. So this was a previous high, lower high. It's going to get ready to give you a lower low. Look at this meter. You can see where it's getting ready to turn red. You can see it on a 15 minute time frame. So let me get a target right here 1.16727. 1. I'll put it into the chat in a minute. So you guys can just copy and paste it. All right, so Euro, we're short Euro USD, stop loss, paste it 1.16761. That's what I did. And I will put the same stop loss for the other one right now for my pendant sell stop. Let the trade come to me, fill me in. Come on, Euro. We're short Euro, baby. Remember why we're shorting Euro? You guys remember why? Why we're shorting, shorting Euro? I got the one hour time frame up. Why we're shorting Euro? Does it make sense? If I were to ask you, Matt, why, why are you shorting euro? You were used to what make, why are you shorting euro? What's the answer? You know the what, you know the how now, you just did it. So but why are we doing this? Why are you shorting euro? Anybody? I just talked about it earlier. There you go. The overall directional bias, baby. That's right. That's right. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. You guys are learning. Wow. This is working. <laughs> All right, good, thank you. Is this helpful, guys? Matt, you enjoying this, Matt? Brad, you guys are good? Brad says he's loving it. All right, cool, awesome. All right. All right, well, pound. Pound US dollars is, is, is not going according to plan. It's kind of going sideways, isn't it? The euro pound is kind of going sideways. We'll hold on to it. My euro pound is kind of going sideways. I'm already in that trade, so you guys are probably not in this trade if you put a mark. If you did a pendant, pendant stop. Okay, dollar switch French is moving. So the dollar is moving. Euro switch France is in profit. Okay, let's go to dollar switch France and see what we see with dollar switch France. So let me see if we can get one more trade before I let you guys go. Euro switch, dollar switch France.
not a lot of movements right now, guys. Sometimes you get a lot of movements, sometimes you don't. Dollar switch friends. Ooh, look at that trend. Let's go to the one hour. What's up on dollar switch friends? What do you guys say? Um, sideways, downtrend? What do you guys think? <laughs> look pretty clear, huh? Look like an overall, that's right, uptrend if you set it. You guys said downtrend, uh, help me Lord. <laughs> go to the 15 minute time frame. This thing is on the move. This thing is on the move. I know, right? So here's what I'm going to do, guys. Um, on this trade right here for now, it looks like it's getting ready to hit a significant level here. So we've got to be careful. Okay. Let's look at the, um, what the strength, where the strength says. Let's go to these, what the strength says. This strength is weak. And USD is strong. All right, so I'm going ahead and go to a my one for a small position here. I'm gonna go ahead and buy. I'm doing a small position, do a buy. Now this pair moves kind of slow. It, it it won't move until like New York session here when it starts really moving. It's switch friends, switch friends is kind of moving, but it, it's not a really a fast moving pair. So I'm gonna put a couple of small position here. So I'm going to do that. My TP, let me go to stop loss first. Average data range is about 50 pips here. And I'm not even gonna put a big, big pip move. I'm gonna put 25 pips, to be honest with you. I'm gonna put it about right here. You see where this resistance is. So it just broke this little resistance. This is what we wanted to see. This is a good time to get into a trade. All right, this is a good, good time. When it broke this little resistance here, that's a great opportunity. That's right there. It's 11 pips past that. I'm sitting here coaching you guys. Could have took that trade. Could have been 11 pips in the profit. All right, so let me go ahead and put the kind of get an estimate. A gray stop loss would have been right here, but since we're late in the game, I'm gonna put a tight stop loss. So, so let me give you the ideal stop loss here. Point nine two one five seven one. One five seven. That's the ideal stop loss right there. All right, so hold on. So I got USD chef. You guys can take this trade if you want to, or you guys can put a small position if you want to. So I got USD chef at price point nine two five one. That's a that's a buy. So overall duration of bias one hour is 
long. So USC chef is looking to go long, long term on overall direction bias. This may carry on into the New York session. You can watch it. You can put a small position. You can uh, you can take one position. It's up to you. Give you an ideal stop loss, and I'm gonna give you the um, aggressive stop loss target. And this is where the ideal stop loss, right? this would be the aggressive stop loss, right where it came off, just kind of in the blue, you can barely probably see it. it's a very strong bias here. This is where it took off from, right? This is kind of the catalyst of where it located at 0.92310. Okay, so that's USD Chef. I just put it in. TP, uh, let me go to one hour. And I see nothing up here, but other than pivot level. So I would need to go to the four hour. What I'm looking for is support and resistance. So now I'm on the four hours. Ah, there it is. Ding, ding, ding. That's a 110 pip move. This thing ranges at 54 pips. Oh, here it is. I see it now. This is one hour. Okay, here it is. Uh, that makes more sense. Okay, so R3 would be my first TP. So I can use a pivot level as well for targets. Point nine three one one five. Yep, Brian, no problem. We're getting ready to close out the call. So I have this recording available. Um, I just put in the take profit for USD Chef. As you can see, I'm in a little bit of a drawdown right now. So it probably would been good to kind of keep a little bit of a uh, uh, stop loss here. Now that could be a pending order. I went into a market execution, so I'm gonna let that trade develop. Um, my trade for Euro Pound is starting to come or come down finally. Thank you. And Pound Dollar is looking to be on the upside. Great. And Euro USD probably hasn't hit our pending stop. Um, stop. Buy stop. Sell stop. Sorry. And your Swiss friends, let me see what your French Swiss friends look like. Boom, three pips and the and the money. I'm okay with that. All right, guys, so we got some trade set up. So we went um, sell your pound. We went buy your pound dollar. Um, 
dollars, which France we went buy, we went sell on Euro US dollar, and we went. Did we do Swiss French, Euro Swiss French? Oh yeah, we went buy on Euro Swiss France. Okay, so those are the pairs that are currently moving. Um, the rest of the market is kind of moving kind of slow right now. Um, so I don't want to give you guys any. Um, we'll, we'll be here for a couple of hours to kind of give you guys a trade setup on all these pairs. I can give you the trade setup and looking over all overall directional bias. But as of right now, for this London session, guys, that is for the current pairs. That's where we're at. Um, is there anything that I missed out on? Did I give you, at least gave you guys the um, the stop loss for the euro pound and pound dollar? I hope. But if not, you guys can go back and make sure you put those stop losses there. I don't want to make this call longer than two to three hours, of course. Right, so already an hour and a half into this. But as of right now, for the initial market open for today's session, so hopefully I can learn at, at the same time you guys caught some opportunity as well. Other than that, let's get down to New York session at 9.30. We're going to be taking this jump. Let's get this US 30. And you know what we're looking for, right? The market is not looking good. Let's see here. Let me pull it up real quick. I'm going to show you guys what it's looking like. So you can see here, look, at this, this is very, very important. This is a correlation. Let me give you guys a master, another master tip. Look at this, the US dollars on the left-hand side. This is the US dollar index. The US dollar index is inverse correlated, or should I say, the Euro USD is inverse correlated to the dollar. Okay, you guys can see that. On the left-hand side is the dollar index. And the right hand side is your USD. Okay. Your USD on the right, dollar index on the left. If you are buying your, your USD, you are not doing this right. <laughs> this is the one hour time frame. Okay. So this is on the dollar index. That's very, very important. So you know you're making the right trades there. So you guys know, you guys can test me and say, okay, Leonard's giving us the right direction. And for um, US 30, let's look at this real quick. So let's go to the one hour. And what do you guys see? One hour, right? I'm gonna put the session breaks here. Boom, boom. So we know where the session breaks are at. So each one of these lines is a session from New York opening to New York close, right? So it's New York opening at five o'clock, oh, five o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock. That's just trade, trade session. All right, so this is yesterday. This is what we saw yesterday. So we caught this move right here. Boom, you guys see that? Okay, that was yesterday. The market tried to do a little push up but today because of the, the market sentiment. This is where it's at. So right now it's at a key level, right? So these are key market levels that I have marked up on the chart. But as you can see, it's right now bouncing at what? You see this bouncing? You see what it's doing? Make sure it makes sense. This is the US 30. This is bouncing here. So in about three more hours, four more hours at New York Open, guys, you guys should be looking for a US 30 great opportunity. You see this bounce, bounce, bounce? But that's telling me that it's testing that lower, lower lows. This is what I wanna see. I wanna see that break of structure right here. And I wanna see this break, retest, something like this. That's my L, All right? This is what I'm looking to do on US 30. So could the market fake me out and put it in, and go above this trend line? Sure, but if the market sentiment overall, I'm looking for directional bias. Either way, we're gonna scalp this bad boy. We're gonna have to scalp it. So we're gonna go either way, it goes up, it goes down. Right now it's ranging, okay? Right now it's not, probably not a great time to get a lot of trade opportunity unless you go down to the one minute. But if you can see right now, it's definitely doing this. This is what it's doing, it's ranging. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours for the last eight hours after that trend. 
you're on the off market, it's not a great time to trade a US 30, maybe the first hour after the um, session close, but right now it's been ranging, right? So let's look at the, I'm gonna look at the daily time frame to kind of give an overall market structure standpoint to see where we're at. So I marked up my chart here. This is a good level here. There's some resistance, resistance. There's some activity here, then it came back down. There was some support, support, a lot of resistance, a lot of activity around this one. This one right here, same thing. Support, support. There's a lot of little bit of activities right here, resistance, resistance. Maybe, maybe even not just leave it right there. And then this is a good one. So these are my last two targets. So this is the daily. If you look at the daily, what do you guys see here? This is a uh, higher low or higher highs at this point. And then it went to a higher low. I mean, lower low, higher low, lower high, sorry, lower high, lower low. You guys see that? Yeah, so the overall US 30, just think about it from an overall directional bias. Right here, this is you no know, downtrend. You go to the one hour, you guys wanna trade with me on US 30? This is how we're doing it. When you guys, if you go to the London session, um, if you guys go to the New York session, you guys trade the US 30 for the non-coaching students. Just I'm kind of giving you guys a heads up what they look for. Um, start to look for a buy opportunity and get this nice trend. This was yesterday and this was a 800 pip move. Okay, 800 pip move guys. That's a lot of money in just in one day. Okay, just one session. So I'm looking to see another pick move here. And I want to see it go from, like I just said, from this area right here, I want to see this move. And then we can see that jump right at the market opening at 930. You're going to have a lot of, um, I, got to, I got to look at some news here just before market open to see what the sentiment is. But I can tell you, um, investors are not happy with the market right now and their recovery of the economy for the United States. So with that being said, the Dow Jones is going to most likely take a dump. I might, we might see a small recovery depending on what's being said. And if so, so what? I don't care if the market is saying it's going up, it's going down, then feeling good, they're feeling happy. Guess what? We're gonna make money going either way, right? We're gonna make money going either way. So on the 15 minute time frame, this is what it looked like. This is what it looked like, the 15 minute time frame. You guys see that? Very clear. And then this is what we saw, right? We saw this touch. Touch, touch, touch. This is 15 minute time frame. So we're, we're looking to see a break of structure here for nice to see a nice sell. So we should be looking for sell opportunity. If we see a buy and go the other way, that's fine. We're gonna be on a smaller time frame. We'll be on a one minute time frame and we'll catch this going up. All right, so this is what the, this is what the market looked like. So I'm giving you guys a frame by frame time frame. The touch. It came up on the, this is the one minute. It touched, it kind of waved itself up. That's a nice trade opportunity there. And then it range, right? This is that range. Bad opportunity. This is the off market, of course, All right? Then it gave you a little bit of nice opportunity. Then it gave you a nice little opportunity up front, up top. Then it gave you a nice little opportunity up down, down below. Nice opportunity up top. These are nice little ranges, but this, these are the touches here. These are the touches. All right, Ryan, see you later. So these are the touches, these are the touches. So this is what we're looking to, um, this is what we're looking to see. We're looking to see this bad boy come down, okay? This is gonna be on New York sets. You guys wanna see me try to trade this for the coaching students. You guys to be on it. You guys can see me do this. This is what I'm looking for. This is going, just going in the range. This is the little mini ranges, right? This is the big range. We're gonna to try to catch this bad boy coming down. So New York session open, this is gonna be my target. And this is where it's at right now. So we're looking at to make a nice 87 pip move right at market open. It's just gonna be our first shot at. This is what I believe is going to happen. Now, could it do that? Of course not. It's not guaranteed to do that. It could, but it could also, 
you know, if something has been said of President Trump or Fred says something else, they want to say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to be okay, then we can see it, you know, make a move on the upside going the other way. Uh, it could be going this way, or it could be going sideways. That's one way. It could be going this way, right? And then, of course, this is what the most likely move will happen. This is the this is the highly probability. This is somewhat probability. This is a very low probability. Just to kind of give you guys a perspective. That's that's just voting right there. Just just knowing that is half the battle. All right, or we'll be looking to trade this bad boy at New York session. You guys, ooh, look at the euro pound. Oh my God, euro pound. Yes, sir. What am I with my euro pound? Hey, Pips, thank you. Woo. <laughs> so just hold on to the trades, guys, euro pound. So I know we got the pound dollar, pound dollars on this way up. So that should be in profit. Um, Euro USD should be on its way down. Get ready, get ready to hit our sell stop order. And I know Swissy is on its way up, and the pound is kind of moving sideways a little bit. So just hold, hold on to those. We know what the overall directional bias of those trades, right? So just hold on to them. Okay, guys. I see you guys in New York session. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Hope you guys learned. I've got this in the recording. This will be posted up in the community. Um, I hope people enjoy this recording as well as much as I enjoy teaching it and holding it for you guys. You guys have a good day if I don't see you guys in a New York session, okay? All right, bye-bye.